Hey guys, we're back for some more standard. So today is going to be day three of my challenge to uh, see if I can get to rank one mythic in standard. And I am so happy that I've been playing this deck. It's just been so much fun. Um, and then just yesterday, I ended up going 6-0 and with this exact list in one of the plans. So I'm now qualified for the standard uh, qualifier weekend next weekend. So super excited for that. And uh, yeah, just gonna be diving in here real quick. So first of all, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. Your support means the world to me and you guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. Um, just again, wanted to give a shout out to Paul Chion's channel because he is the one who inspired me to take on this challenge. So I'm a huge fan of his and I think he's one of the best drafters um, and I, I love his videos. So again, that his challenge inspired me to do this challenge. Um, so I also wanted to mention that now that I'm qualified for the uh, big tournament coming up this next weekend, for the next leg here leading up to the tournament, I'm going to be doing best of three with this deck just because I think that, you know, I need to do everything that I can to prepare for it. I'm still going to be doing ladder to see if we can get to rank one, but the next leg of the journey here is going to be best of three matches. And so for those of my viewers um, who are best of three players, um, it's going to be great because hopefully this will help you with sideboarding and preparing for best of three matchups. And for best of one, just know that this best of one list is the one that went 6-0 and yesterday um, in a play-in. And so I think that the list is pretty good, pretty airtight. I'm going to be leaving the, the main deck the same. And so hopefully you guys can see great results with it yourselves in best of one. Um, one other final note. So the deck list is listed in the description, both on moxfield.com and untapped.gg. I have a link to both, so you can go ahead and check it out. And then I will also have a playlist so you can see the full playlist if you want to check out the other videos where I kind of go and do a little bit more of the nuance of the deck. So all that said, let's go ahead and jump into some games. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you want to leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you want to show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. And I'm excited to try out the sideboard here because it is untested for me, but just from like previous, um, I guess, play with this style of deck, I hope that it's going to be fairly successful, and I have a, a decent plan for what some of these other matchups are going to bring, so excited here. We just hit uh, Diamond 3 yesterday, so looking forward to keep climbing here. Uh, yeah, opening hand looks great. A little bit slow, but we do have some uh, two drops here, so that feels pretty good. We are on the play. And yeah, the, the March of Otherworldly Light has just been amazing. It ended up winning me the, the final match of the uh, play-in yesterday. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to record it, but um, now I've got the uh, qualifier token, so super excited about that. Okay, looks like we're up against Boros Convoke here. Yeah, and definitely I think we're going to hold on to our march. There's going to be better targets here for it. But notably, like if they play like a warden, that's something that I might want to consider using the march on. And we could consider just going like novice inspector here holding up march. Um, I think that that actually might be a decent plan since we can stop their demolition if we do it this way. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and just run out the inspector here. Since this will really, this is kind of the purpose of this card in the deck. OK, 
Okay, there's the warden. We are going to allow the scry because it looks like they've got the demolition and we can blow them out here with the march. So this is perfect for us. Now we've got Iganjo here for their warden if they want to hold back, which it sounds like they probably do want to try to do. So instead of, we could play Copper Coat here, uh, but then we're not going to have enough mana for Iganjo. So I think we just push, see what they do. We are certainly representing Iganjo here, so I think that they are respecting that. Um, let's just go ahead and crack one of these clues and then see where we want to go from there. Okay, and Warden is a nice pickup. So it looks like they might have like um, Case of the Gateway Express here. I think it's what they're possibly thinking about. Maybe looking at our creatures. Otherwise, I guess it's possible that they have like a rec um, an Imidane's. So maybe they're just holding like another resolute reinforcements here. I think that's pretty much all they could have. Or maybe, I suppose they could have Iganjo as well. Or possibly another like Sokinzen. But either way, we're gonna be pushing in. Um, and then again, we wanna hold up the Iganjo. So I think let's just go ahead and send with everything here and see what they do. So the consideration is like if we push with everything and they just like decide to take nine, could they just like come back and kill us? Like let everything through. I guess they can go like Imidane's next turn. Push for three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Enough to get there. Sixteen, but we can play some blockers. So I think we still attack. I think we still push in. <laughs> I guess if they have, like, reinforcements into Imidanes, this could be detrimental, but I think we gotta, I think we gotta push. Actually, um, one minor correction there. They didn't have it and didn't punish us. But for that uh, use of Iganjo, we probably should have waited to put a stop on damage just to make sure that our creature damages them. So if they had like the Iganjo in response, that would have been a blowout. 
Although they didn't have the mana, I guess, to target it, so we were still okay. It didn't matter in that in that exact instance, but it could have mattered. So, like when you're in a situation like that, you want to put a stop a stop on damage, and then just do um, Yiganjo after damage has happened, but still during combat. Okay, that was a nice pickup. So now if we push with everything, they have force blocks on the foundry. Prob they probably block recruiter to foundry, warden to warden. We push for two, drop them to one. That forces us to use all of our mana so we won't be able to play the other warden. I think it's still worth it though, like, because then we, if we draw like another land next turn, we have like four threats again. So I think we do run this play. Yeah, and those are going to be the exact blocks we expect. The other thing is we could let this foundry go and then just play out the warden, but we wouldn't be able to pump it, so I think it's better to just save the foundry here. Risky Knight Errant there. I guess they have to like double hit. Yeah, and that's gonna do it. I guess they had to have a hit there to stay in the game. Um, all right, so we're bringing in two more March just because for that exact reason. And then they don't really have a ton of removal. So I think we want to probably bring in Brutal Cathar also. It's quite good. What do we want to cut here? Um, Thalia is good. Sentinel is like less important because it doesn't, like they don't really have any graveyard strategies. Um, everything else on the top is good. I think it's probably the other weakest card. Like we want Novice Inspector to be able to kind of get things going with Warden and we want early drops. So I think we just cut Sentinel here. Like Sentinel can like, I guess, get through like a big field of their stuff. But I think the other things we have are just more important, like initiate for dealing with their enchantments. Same with like the marches. I suppose we could do like a half and half on inspector plus sentinel just to like kind of lower our curve a little bit, but still have some action. That actually might be better. I mean, like, cause one sentinel could break open the game if like we're able to use it to just like push through damage. So maybe I'll kind of be a little speculative here and just like cut to two inspector and two sentinel keep like a fairly even curve this way we still have 11 one drops so this feels good actually i think this is probably how i want to do it the other consideration we could bring in get lost to deal with like their enchantments um but i don't like giving them tokens i feel like that's super dangerous especially with demolition so I think we just keep it like this. And this hand looks great. We definitely want our veterans.
Okay, no demolition is nice. Now we can go Inspector plus Warden feels pretty good. Um, we could go Thalia here. Like if they haven't got demolition, there's a decent chance like maybe they've got um, War Leaders call on three. And we could slow that down potentially with Thalia. But I think it's actually more important to get Warden going. So we can like start winning the Warden fight. Could be wrong, but I think this is a little better. And that's a great pickup. Now we can go and try to find more veterans to give ourselves more time to really kind of explode. We just want veteran plus copper coat because we've already got two wardens, I think. Yeah. So, like, if they have like case of Gateway Express, it's pretty rough here. Um, but other than that. I suppose like even if they have Imidans, like we're taking some damage, but we can gain some of that back. Okay, they just want to go looking also. Makes sense. So they probably maybe like we have to expect that they've got Imidans in hand also. Now they're just gonna just build their board a little bit more. And they can push a pretty healthy Imidane's next turn. No Warden though, which is kind of a blessing. Um, man, if we had extra mana, Cathar would be amazing on their Evangelist. So we want to try to set that up. Um, could go Thalia here. I think we just want to get the other Veteran going. But also, hmm. I guess we actually want to be mana efficient. Probably Vanguard is a bit safer. So if they have like, if they have Imidane's Recruiter next turn, what happens? They push for four, seven, 13, 16, 19, 22, 25, 28. We need one blocker here and like two blockers to survive it. I guess just one because we're going to gain some life here. So I think that Copper Coat is probably fine. And we can keep growing our Warden, but I think we want to not be too greedy with it. So even though we could survive another turn. Because if they have, like, land plus guy plus Imidanes, I think that's enough to kill us. So I think we just could try pushing with Knight Errant and then just sit and see what happens. I think that might be right. They probably trade off here. And then if we can get into land, we can go Cathar on their Evangelist before they go off. Okay, Barrage is definitely pretty good. Ooh, they had Barrage plus Case. Ooh, it's 
That's a beating. All right, we have to block Evangelist. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Do we trade with the Warden or keep it around? I feel like we... Now they've got Case, it's a little bit too dangerous to be tapping out with Warden, so I think we trade it off. Try to mitigate some damage here. Okay, still short on land. Um, I think we just want to set up Veteran now. Try to claw our way back. March is really good if they draw into demolition. Um, it's also good to deal with case. So we could potentially do that next turn to get rid of their case, and that would be pretty amazing. Um, let's see. It does mean that we won't be able to get Cathar going, but I think getting rid of the case is more important, so let's keep that around. Oof, it's a beating. All right, so unfortunately now I think we we sit and probably have to like double block an inspector because we definitely need to march this case. <sighs> that might just be a little bit too much. That might be lights out. Yeah, plus Recruiter is going to be just nasty. I think we, I think we just die here. Because, like, it's going to be three. We block two creatures. Yeah, we're still just dead. The barrages are definitely pretty good. Um... I think I like our board though. Maybe cut like one sentinel, bring back an, in, an inspector. Yeah, I, I kind of like it how it is. I think this is fine actually. Unfortunately, stuck on land. Okay, that'll work. They definitely, they don't run counters, so I think we just toss the Cavern of Souls since it's a little more helpful to have natural planes. We have a really nice one, two, three punch here also. This also shuts them down from going into, um, like, Inspector into uh, Gleeful Demolition this turn, which is really nice. Or even Case.
So if they offer the trade here, I'm not sure if we take it or not. Like there's a there's a decent argument either way. I think we probably don't because we've got Adeline and like Thalia's ability is pretty relevant. They could still take over the game with a Warden, so it might be worth making the trade. Yeah, this is close. And like we don't have an answer to it in hand, so I think we actually do make this trade. This is going to be... I'm not sure if this is right, but like I think this warden can get out of hand super quickly. Yeah, like, Warden is such a huge threat in this matchup. I think they're just trying to finesse damage here. Like, they don't have... I guess they could, like... I mean, they've got, like, Lithomatic Barrage kills it anyways. They can't play Iganjo. Case doesn't work unless they've got, like, Creature plus Case. That might be what they're trying to do, is, like, lay a land, play a Creature, play Case, take out the Adeline. That'd be pretty backbreaking. So I think, like, since that specific scenario could be the case, I think I'm actually going to just take it. Like, it's a very, like, corner corner case scenario but it's possible and I think it might cost us the game if we let it happen they probably were just finessing damage there but because of that specific corner case I think it's correct to not block So here they're representing uh, reinforcements, and so they can take out the Adeline, but I think we're happy trading with their Warden. Yeah, and having them blow that clue is actually a really good sign. They didn't have reinforcements. But like looking back, I think it was almost certainly correct to trade with the early warden because it definitely would have taken over the game. All right, so they did have the case. So 
we don't know if they had the case the turn that it was relevant, but I think there's a decent chance that they did. And like their playstyle would make sense that they had it. And we're trying to like sneak out the uh, the win there with the, the inspector getting us to block. It's interesting that they didn't um, go ahead and tap down again. I mean, if I were them, I would have tapped down because we're not representing super big damage here. But I guess they're worried about Sentinel. So I think that we probably do activate Foundry and then use Sentinel to push through damage, or at least make them trade off their Epicure. The problem there is that they are going to be able to activate Case, but I think they were going to do that anyways. Is it worth the three damage? Like we swing in for four and then they can like full send back for six. Then they have active case. I don't think it's getting better though. I think like that might be how we win is trying to push damage. I'm trying to think what we draw into. Yeah, I think sitting around doesn't really work here. Yeah, we need to like pick up an answer for Warden. Like drawing into a Brutal Cathar or another March would be super important right now. But I'm glad we kept the Sun Gold Sentinels in because I think they actually are pretty good here. Like being able to get through or at least threaten. All right, so now you, if they have Recruiter, we're probably just dead. If they haven't got Recruiter and they just attack, they're pushing two, four, nine, 11, 13, 15. We might have to play to our outs here. So like, I think that maybe we try to go Knight Errant for two, see what we can pick up. Because they already have like a black creature, a red creature, a white, so they're probably not letting the Sun Gold Sentinel through anyways. I think that's the play.
I suppose we could have like activated Foundry and convoked that to try to pick up like a Brutal Cathar. Maybe that was correct. But I think that would have left us like super open to not having any creatures. And that's just suicide. So here, Initiate. We don't really have enough time to get Initiate going unless we do Initiate plus Warden. That's actually kind of interesting. If we do Initiate plus Warden, we can blow up their case. I don't know that it's enough, though. Yeah, I think we, I think we need, um, all right, I was going to say, we kind of ran out of time there, but I think we don't really have the, the bandwidth and the space to, to try to use that to get their case out of the way. We just want the copper coat. Not really sure, wait a second, what happened here? Did the game just bug out? Yeah, I don't really know what happened. I guess we didn't have a chance to play our creatures. We ran out of time. And I don't know <laughs> where the warden went, but the image is still up here, so that's kind of weird. Okay, that's a very weird bug. That was so weird. I guess it stayed in our hand, but like stayed up here in this weird way. Um, yeah, and they've got Warden now, so they can prevent the damage. Um, even if we Copper Coat and activate Foundry, we don't have enough mana to push it all through, I think. That's a shame. Yeah, because we've got exactly seven here, but they would have been able to block anyways. Yeah, so I think we just took too much time there. I don't know if we could have turned this one around. <sighs> yeah, that's going to do it. Yeah, I think I get a little bit um, too much into like explaining the plays and like run out of time. So I gotta pick up the pick up the pace a little bit, but either way, it's I mean I think it's really really fun to try to like pick apart the the right plays if possible. I'm thinking more about the sideboard now also. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe like running a couple copies of like temporary lockdown in the sideboard just specifically for like the Boros match might be might be necessary. I mean I know it hoses our deck too, but if we like see like the, the way the game is going where we just kind of play a little soft and then they have them over expand, it could be totally backbreaking. Especially since they're running like case plus barrage, like they just have a lot of good answers to our stuff. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, opening hand looks great. All right, so we're up against World Soul. Gonna lead out here with Inspector. That way when we, if we play Warden next turn, then we can go ahead and immediately activate um, before they could respond. Yeah, and I think we just wanna go Inspector plus Warden here. Actually, I guess it's in a consideration. Um, we could have like attacked first and like represented having something. Might have been able to finesse a point of damage. So we probably should have attacked first there, since we're not gonna. We don't. They're not gonna attack. We don't care about blocking here. That's perfect. Sun Gold Sentinel is built for this matchup, so that'll be nice to start eating up their graveyard. I mean, Adeline is really good here too, though. Especially because next turn they, they probably want to go like ill-timed explosion. So I think Adeline is like a better chance of surviving it. Yeah, I feel like maybe we check for the explosion next turn, and then if it doesn't happen, then we can Sun Gold Sentinel after that. Actually, to the point here, I think we just um, double pump Warden because that'll put it up to five toughness and hopefully out of range of uh, explosion. They can usually hit for like three or four, but five is pretty difficult. And we're only missing like two damage. Uh, veteran, I don't think we need here. I guess we could like go like Veteran plus something, but we want to be able to like possibly go Adversary. So let's pass on Veteran. Yeah, we just want to get Warden out of range. Okay, and that feels pretty good. So we can double spell next turn or go Adversary. Okay, now they've got Aftermath Analyst. We're gonna look for a big push here. So Sentinel's decent, but we can just push a lot more damage with Adversary. Actually, I guess the damage is the same since we've got Copper Coat. Yeah, so maybe in this case we do just do both here. Okay, so let's go Sentinel. Um, let's see, they can get all types, right? They already have... It doesn't really matter which one of these we get rid of. push and 
And now post combat we can bring this up to seven, which feels pretty good. I think, yeah, I think that's good. I don't know that we want to do this next turn necessarily, but we've got adversary, so it gives us options. Yeah, Deluge isn't going to do it. Nice. All right, so let's bring in Hearse. Um, and then what else is good here? Peacekeeper to pause there or to make it harder for him to cast the old time explosion do we want march i think march is actually pretty good um, because it deals with their oh god the the analyst so they can't just get a huge stack of lands um i guess we could also do get lost i mean get lost Gives them the map tokens, which they might have a tough time using. They don't have a ton of creatures, so it might be okay. Yeah, actually, I think Get Lost maybe is a little, little better. All right, what do we cut? We don't care about Veteran. Um, Initiate is okay, I guess. Novice Inspector would be the other card that's a little weaker. Just doesn't, we want to push damage. So I think Cathar is also a little dangerous because they can, if we Cathar something and then they bring it back with like an explosion, that's kind of dangerous. All right, so I think we actually just go for Get Lost here. And I think we want the full set. I can leave a March in. Um, we want to have some one drops. It's kind of nice to get things going, but maybe let's hedge a little bit just so we have some more removal. I think this feels pretty good. All right, that's not a hand we can keep. That'll work. Um, and let's throw back, probably throw back Foundry here. Like we've got stuff happening. Although we do have a, th I mean, I kind of want all those cards. I think we just throw back the Foundry and just hope to get there. Otherwise we like throw back one of these threes, but they're both really good. Yeah, I think we throw back Foundry. I guess I'm just like, I'm not sure if they bring in a bunch of creatures. I don't think they do. I think they just bring in like probably more board wipes. So I think that the um, get lost will be pretty decent. Like we can use them on their, um, I think they run like that one enchantment that triples the land value. So it's still gonna be good there. going to be a huge problem. Um, Nissa is just such a pain. Yeah, 
so now Adeline is a little bit less tempting. We can go for Knight Errant here. Could also just go Peacekeeper, just to like look upstairs. But they're going to have a ton of mana with this Nyssa. I think we want to get the Knight Errant going. Although, we want Knight Errant to find... What do we want to find? Probably more like Vanguards. Yeah, I think we go Knight Errant this turn. Definitely Copper Coat. I guess we can get Warden going. Okay, we definitely want to march that analyst. I mean, we really want to march them both, to be honest, but they're standing to get like way too many lands back here, so I think we just march the analyst. We can march analyst and then play copper coat, and that feels pretty good. We do open ourselves up to potential like ill-timed explosion next turn, but I think it's still worth it. So I think if we, if we march, we probably pitch Warden because we just don't have time now, and all these other cards are better. Oh, we have to pay an extra because of Thalia. <sighs> yeah. I think it's still fine. These other cards are still are just a bit stronger. Unfortunately, we, we couldn't play the Copper Coat, but we want to keep all this stuff, I think. Maybe we could have pitched like Adeline and then played the Warden. That might have been a little better. Yeah. Yeah, that might have been better, actually. I forgot about the Thalia attacks. Yeah, we definitely want a top deck removal for this analyst. It's going to be a problem. Okay, so they're going to get a ton of land back next turn. No stopping it. We could Peacekeeper for Memory Deluge. Wouldn't be the worst. Because like we're not pushing in for a lot this turn. So I think that's probably the move, given what we've done already. Yeah, I think we just go for Memory Deluge here.
Yeah, so now, like, the more that I I look at this, I feel like we definitely want to get more removal for these uh, Aftermath Analysts. That's, like, the, the, the total engine of their deck. Because they're going to get, like, a billion mana here, so... I think we probably want all four marches. And probably even... I guess even if it's a little bit dangerous, maybe having access to, like, Brutal Cathar is probably good. But that does seem a bit more dangerous. All right, yeah, this is probably a little bit too little too late. Because next turn they can just like tap for a billion, get a billion things back, and go and find whatever. Um, but I guess let's just push. I guess the other possibility is like we're not pushing for that much damage. Maybe the move here is just like cracking the clue and trying to find March. That might be right, actually. I think it's kind of a Hail Mary, but it's probably the best. Yeah, we didn't get there. I guess they just got big World Souls Rage here. Yeah. All right, going back to the board, we definitely want all four marches. And I think, like, the next weakest cards are probably these Inspectors. Because, like, if they're boarding into um, and the Festivities, I guess, I mean, that hits our Adversary, but our Adversary is, like... Actually, maybe we, we cut Adversary here. So yeah, we definitely want more early game to try to get the Warden going. And Inspector is pretty good with Warden. We want to have enough early drops. Adversary is also not as effective if we don't have as many early drops. So I think this might be right. So just cut those. This looks good. And I still think that like we don't want Cathar because if they manage to get rid of the Cathar and like get their analyst back, it's probably game like right there. Yeah, definitely feeling into this a little bit, but I think this is a... We've got a decent strategy here for board. And it's really nice to work through some of these sideboard matches, just because um, I feel like the, the, the deck has a really good game one and best of one, but I haven't explored the full like sideboard plan and best of three matchups. 
So I hope you guys are okay with some best of three content here for a little bit before the uh, the tournament. But I'm super stoked. I, I'm really hoping to do well. It would be so cool to to get like into day two for the uh, qualifier weekend. And standard is my favorite format of all time. So I just so stoked, so excited for it. But I think just as like sort of a preview, probably after this coming weekend, it'll probably, I'll probably go back to best of one for the remainder of like the, the challenge. So we'll get in some for both both of you guys who like uh, best of three and best of one. All right, hand looks great. Got stuff to do. Nice one, two, three with Warden, Thalia, Knight Errant. Feeling good. By the way, I just want to take another moment here just to tell you guys how much I appreciate you and thank you for being here. So um, you guys make this all possible. I just want to just thank you guys for for watching. It means a lot to me. Yeah, without you, there would be no channel. All right, opponent is deep in the tank here, trying to figure out if they've got a decent hand or not. But our hand is great, so I'm excited. Sentinel for sure, and I guess a Warden. Okay, so the Peacekeeper is really nice. I think we can wait a turn on Peacekeeper, though, because we've got the Thalia, so we're not worried about Explosion just yet. So let's go ahead and get Warden Cook in here. Okay, so that just copies one of these other ones. Um, they all get forced, so we're not. Guess we get rid of like the broker's hideout. We want to try to cut off forests. And another Peacekeeper sounds great. I suppose we could have attacked and finessed. That, uh, we probably should have attacked there. For all they know, we brought in some pump. Unlikely, but possible. Okay, let's look upstairs, see what they're working with. Virtue. Okay. Yeah, so let's turn off Deluge. Seems pretty good. Um, 
another get lost is decent. Wouldn't say no to it. I think we have enough stuff going on here. Maybe we want to pick up like a some cheaper stuff or maybe like pump. So this is a good top deck. I think it's it's good enough to keep. Alright, now we want to get rid of these courtyards. just make deluge extra expensive could also turn off virtue um hmm although we kind of don't mind to play if they play virtue because we can just cast get lost and that seems okay so maybe just making deluge extra expensive because they're set up to pay five we can just put it out of reach here and i kind of like that I guess we get rid of the echoing deeps. Okay, so they're at 13. They've got one unknown card. Uh, let's see, so three, six, eight, nine. Yeah, they're just dead. That works. And whether we get lost or just attack with everything, I think it's fine. It's either way, it's the same. Nice. Yeah, that felt like a pretty good plan here for this matchup, so it's nice to be able to see it. Yeah, so that was a great match. <clears throat> Definitely feel like starting to figure out some of these sideboard plans. All right, run the play. Opening hand looks great. Okay, so maybe we're up against um, Domain. 
I guess just set up here for Night Errant turn three. Start pushing a little bit of damage. Hopefully we can pick up like an Adeline or something like that. Yeah, definitely Domain. Oh, that'll be nice. Turn four adversary. Get that going. Uh, veteran is definitely less important here. Okay, so they're representing binding here. Um, now, I think domain... I mean, it definitely runs Sunfall. I don't remember if they run like a four-mana board wipe. I think there's a chance they, that they run... Um, both like lockdown and sunfall, but nothing in between. Some version, I think some lists maybe do, but I, kind of what I'm getting with this is that we could either try to like get adversary now and start pushing, otherwise, we could go like Dahlia plus and just like put everything out there. I actually kind of like that. I think it's a little bit, it is a, a tiny bit risky here because we are looking at um, opening ourselves up to lockdown. If they haven't got it though. Like they might have just locked down already if they could. I guess they didn't have the white source. All right, so let's let's push and then like see what they do. I think I do want to go for this big like turn five push with adversary. Yeah, there's the binding that we expected. And it, you know, it sucks losing that, that damage there, but I think I'd rather have the Thalia sort of locking stuff down. Oh, you know what? I should have played Veteran here first. I, the life is not a huge thing against this matchup. Um, yeah, I mean, technically, I should have played Veteran there before Thalia. But I don't think it's going to be as important in this matchup. Let's get this going. Um, one Egon, I think, is nice. I don't know that we need two. I suppose they can start dropping angels, so it's possible that, that holding some Eganjos is correct. Yeah, actually, I think I'm going to keep the Eganjo here. Just because there is a very real chance that they just like, drop angel. Okay, so now we just go adversary push. Okay, nice one on top. And then we just want to start shoving. I think we hold both the ganjos here. Like next turn, let's see if we play one now, we could have six mana next turn. I don't think that's going to matter. Actually, I think maybe it's better to hedge and play it because then if we have six mana, we can go, if they like board wipe here, we can go Foundry plus Adeline and start pushing. So actually, I think it is probably correct to play one. Board wipe or bust. Yeah, Angel I don't think is going to be enough. Because now we can go Adeline plus Eganjo push, and that feels pretty good. And we're definitely pushing lethal, so yeah, I think that's the play.
Yeah, and that should do it. All right, so against Domain, Brutal Cathar is pretty bad. I mean, like it's, I guess it's a way like the last possible turn to deal like if they go, can drop their Atraxa. But I think we'd rather have Peacekeeper to like shut down their Sunfalls and things like that. We probably also want access to get lost here. It deals with Binding, deals with Atraxa. Do we want March? Um, hmm. Also, I guess we could consider hearse here as well. I don't know. I, I can't remember if domain has a way of like getting attracts into the yard. I think they just like hard cast it usually. Um, I have to look at the list, but I think veteran is less important. Um, initiate's good, Inspector and Warden are fine. Yeah, I mean, I guess with the board wipes, like, Curse isn't, isn't a bad way to kind of run like a hedge. Um, I think all of our twos feel pretty good. March, I suppose, is a decent, like, another answer to angel i guess the real question is do we want like four marches four get lost i think like bet between everything like the six is probably enough so what do we cut here our twos are getting pretty overloaded um we probably cut it two. i guess maybe we can cut like one sun gold sentinel everything else feels pretty good I'm not sure if this is right, but... I think they, def they definitely have access to lockdown. And so, yeah, actually, maybe we should have brought in more marches because they're going to have lockdown. That could be right. All right, lead out here with Inspector um, into Warden. All right, let's just go Warden Setup. Do we want another Warden? Um, yeah, I think another Warden's fine. We'll probably just drop Adeline next turn, but getting a Warden, then we can go, like, Peacekeeper plus Warden on four. So I think that's fine. question here is do we want to go peacekeeper to like look upstairs and see if they've got sunfall on on their next turn i feel like they just have like angel or something like that and angeling for one isn't super amazing so i think we can actually cheat out another turn here with adeline and then do peacekeeper next turn i think that's the play Cause then like we're threatening the board. They could sunfall here, I suppose. It wouldn't be bad. But now if they have like setting up for like a track so next turn, we definitely want a peacekeeper.
Yeah, and I feel like they are, especially with that brood migration, since they could have just played it. Um, I definitely think it's Peacekeeper over Thalia here. All right, let's look upstairs. Yeah, there's the Atraxa and the Sunfall. What a double whammy. Well, crap. <laughs> oh, that's a beating. Okay, I guess we got to take the Atraxa, just slow things down. They're going to Sunfall, which is super awkward. Um, yeah, I guess we buy it. Hmm. Because you're going to have seven next turn for Sunfall anyways. So we definitely go for the Atraxa here. And then definitely hold everything because we're just going to get blown out. Um, super big sunfall. I guess they just want to buy even more time before Sunfall, maybe. I think we trade with Adeline here. Because we got to fight through it on the way back anyways. I guess we can trade Foundry for Stomper. And then like we have Get Lost. I guess we could also, yeah. I think we just offer the, the Foundry here. Okay, so they're one away from Atraxa now. Um, I guess we can, yeah, we'll just hold to get lost here. They'll get a refill with Atraxa, but... Not a lot we can do about it. So what do they got? Sunfall, Angel, Lockdown. It's going to be pretty rough to beat.
So I think we gotta fight through this thing. Um, can push for a little bit of damage here. Oh, whoops, actually that cost more than I was expecting. Oh, here we go. There we are. Okay, what is going on? Oh, did the auto tapper screw up on our... Okay, what is... I thought we had two extra mana here. Oh, yeah, I guess it tapped the cavern the wrong way. Whoops. Oh, well. Misclick there on the auto-tapper. Auto so we could have pushed an extra two damage there. Yeah, Archangel's a beating. That's pretty much going to do it, because they've got Sunfall back up, plus Lockdown. Yeah. All right, let's go to game three. Since we know they're bringing in Lockdown, I think we definitely want access to probably the extra marches. Um, they're not using as much from the graveyard, so I think maybe Hearse is not as good here. So if we cut hearse, bring in another march, maybe cut another sentinel, bring in the fourth march. Um, we could also consider knockout blow, but I mean, Iganja kind of does the same thing. I think this is probably good. Being on the play is also huge. Hand looks great. This way we've got four get lost, four marches to deal with our lockdowns. Let's go double warden, scry, and then set up for knight errant. I don't know that we have time for double knight errant. We might just want the mana. Like, it's definitely great. But I think we actually just want the land. I might—I I don't know if I'm, that's just crazy talk here. Yeah, I guess especially if they have removal, we definitely want lands. So we can march. I think we just vanguard here and just push. And then we can use like otherworldly light if they go lockdown. We could have also gone like Sun Gold Sentinel there, that would have been fine also. But I think just pushing damage feels pretty good. There's the lockdown. So now I think we just like lock. Okay, I think we just march on the end step of their turn.
And I think we pitch probably the Sentinel. I think we just want to push here like because they're getting in range of angel and other kind of big stuff i don't know that we have time to go for knight errant mm, it's close i think that like push plus thalia is pretty good but we might never have another chance to go for knight errant so there's Yeah, it's close. Yeah, I guess we knight errant here. We've got two knight errants. We gotta get them out of our hand. This could be a little crazy, but I think we we do go knight errant to pick up another copper coat. I get definitely like I think there there might be an argument there for. Well, at least now we have a refill, so that's pretty good. another land um, I mean a land is okay but it's not that's fine I suppose I think we're gonna need a third land eventually anyways so I guess we just hope they don't have like a track so here Angel would be rough as well. Right. At least now we can refill with Knight Errant a little bit. And they're top decking, which is always good. Okay, swing and a whiff. Hopefully that's not a track, so. <laughs> okay, Iganjo's good times. I think we push with everything and see if we can get them either to double block Knight or put something on Copper Coat and then just use the Iganjo. I guess we could also just like double push, but I think we're kind of running out of time here. If they have Angel also, we might need to save this, but I think we just gotta push and hope it works out. If they double block Vanguard, it's awkward.
So I guess it all comes down to their top deck. Hopefully not a Traxa. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty bad. Oof. is good. Gotta just hope they don't have a Traxxas here. Like, we could have taken more hits, but like, with the lifelink, I think we just gotta get rid of it. We're definitely on the back foot. Okay, that might just do it. We've got to get lost at least. Yeah, that's probably gonna do it. They've got the herd migration, plus lockdown, plus angel. It's definitely a beating. I think that is gonna do it, unfortunately. Yeah, Sunfall depopulate plus lockdown. Well, we fought the good fight, didn't quite get there. Yeah, I think that uh, best of three is definitely a different beast, but um, the deck has been forming really well in best of one. All right, let's take a look at the stats. All right, so we are currently 73% win rate, 19 wins, seven losses. Uh, now, bear in mind, this does not take into account um, the six and oh that I went in the event uh, for the best of one plan. So I think it is performing really well. The matchups there, yeah, it looks like domain is a rough one. Um, but uh, overall, feeling pretty good. And looks like we're at least positive on like Boros Convoke, Mono Red Aggro, and um, some other matchups here. So we will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much again for your support. And again, if you like my content, consider subscribing. You guys are awesome.